This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. A student wants to create a calculator that allows the user to repeatedly enter two numbers and provide the result of the first number raised to the second. Ah, we should be a bit familiar with this. Write the expression or write the calculate exponent method in calculator. Here we are. Okay. Use math.pow to get the result of the first number raised to the second number. Okay, return the result of the value of the first number raised to the second input scanner. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we're going to get user input here. So we don't need to worry about directly getting user input within our class. We're just going to return results, it looks like. All right, okay, so that being said, I'm going to go ahead and since we know it's going to be a double result, I'm going to do double and just call this result. And I'm going to set it equal to, well, math.pow math.pow okay and keep in mind we can call this directly because the pow uh, method is static since it is static i don't need to instantiate a math object or uh, and use it that way you know like doing my math equals new math blah 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 all i have to do is do math.pow and now i need to give it the values we're going to use which is first number and second number and I know that because, well, they're right here. Those are our parameters. Okay. And then I'm going to return the result, it looks like. Now, keep in mind, this could be directly if I wanted to feel a bit fancy. I do like the readability of it this way, but I could always just do something like this instead and get rid of that line. Regardless, I think this is more readable. All right, let's head over here. And now we're going to use a sentinel value. We haven't done this in a little while. Okay, so let's... Let's do a bit of review, one could say. And what we're going to do with this, let's see, use signal value to repeatedly prompt the user for two numbers or negative one to quit. For each number, they enter call calculate exponent method and print the result. Okay. So there's a few ways we can do this, but I'm going to have them enter the numbers separately. Now, let's see... I'm going to do double num1 is going to be equal to negative 1, and that's for a very specific reason. Oh, no, 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 not negative 1. Negative 1 is going to be out the quit, I believe they asked for. Yes. And so then I'll do double num2, and maybe you want to follow their lead and do, what did they do over here? First number, second number, that works just the same. Zero. Okay. So here's those, and now I want to do a while loop. And we've seen this before, guys. We want to repeatedly loop through the code, asking them for this information and providing them the result. We'll allow them to escape our loop, right? Because we definitely, definitely don't want an infinite loop by entering negative one. So wall, and I'll just do num1 is greater. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, let's not do greater. I'm going to just say does not equal negative one. Since they said directly that was going to be uh, the escape value. Okay, so as long as number one doesn't equal negative one, and it won't to start because I just set it to zero, let's go ahead and prompt the user for a number, and we've had practice at this recently. They already instantiated a scanner class, so that's great. So I'm going to do a system.out.print, and I'll say enter the first number, I guess. Yep. Okay, great and great, and then a semicolon. And now, and guys, again, I use print here so that their input will appear next to this rather than a new line because println forces it down the line. And now I'm going to do double, and I'll say num1 is going to be equal to, we want the scanner class to grab whatever they're entering into this. And so my scanner class, the instantiated name of it, the object name is input, so input dot, um, next. Yep, this is all doubles. Okay, so input dot next double, boom, 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 is going to be equal to double num1. Now, I'm going to do something very similar for number two. So let me just hammer that out and I'll talk about it. Oh, and I have an error here, guys. I've already declared num1 up here. I cannot, there's no reason to redeclare it. That would be an issue. I just want to assign it a new value. Okay, so now that we have both the numbers entered, we need to use the calculate exponent method that we have right here. Oh, interesting. And it is static. 
That means we don't have to instantiate a class or a class object. We can just use calculator directly. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead uh, for each of the numbers they call call method and print the result. I'm going to go ahead and do a double result is going to be equal to calculator dot and calculator dot I spell all this right typos are my uh, the death of me all right there we are and then I'm going to pass to it my variables again guys if you called this first num second num you want to pass that num one num two now what is this gonna well no I'm gonna run through the whole thing at the end that's the result and we're supposed to print out the result so and this time I'll use a println and just say um why not say result equals Bam, bam, bam. So there is going to be an issue here. When they enter negative one, we want them it to quit. We don't actually want to use that. I also wonder if we want to do it for both num one and num two. Decisions, decisions. No. Uh, to avoid this, I'm just going to do a simple if. So if num one does not equal negative one, then we're gonna do all of this. So I'm just gonna move this code in here. And that way, if they do enter negative one, we don't make them go through all of this. We just skip through it. This would be false if it's negative one, goes back to the top and they exit it out. Now, something we also wanna make sure to do, did I print the result here? Yes, yes, um, is to close the scanner class once it is over. So input, Dot close. All right, let's give this all a shot and see what bugs we have. Enter the first number, two. Enter the second number, three, eight. So two to the third power is eight. That's correct. Enter the first number, 2.1, and then three again, nine point blah, 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 blah. That seems correct. But just in case, let me magic up my calculator. I did, let me magic my way to, oh, I did 2.1 raised to three. And what does that give us? 9.261, that is working correctly. Now let's test the exit. Boom, program is complete. Now there's a few ways to do this fancier, you could say, right? I could do something like take this and instead of assigning it a value, I could print it out directly. Let me undo that. I could even put a print tile in above this saying something like the result of num1 print out the value to the power of num2 print out the value equals result. Doing that stuff really isn't needed though and this 100% fulfills the requirements. Also, we'll be able to reference what the first and second number is because it would still be on our screen anyways. But uh, cool, onward.